Hi everyone, I'm Patrick and welcome back to my channel. So one year ago, Anaconda announced PyScript, which allows you to create rich web applications using only HTML and Python. And the team behind PyScript has spent the last year improving the open source project a lot. And it grew to almost 16,000 stars on GitHub. And now they just announced PyScript.com, which is a platform you can use for free that makes it really simple to get started with PyScript. And here you can code websites directly in your browser. So in this video, we take a look at the platform and I show you how to use PyScript and we go over all important features. And in the end, I quickly show you three example websites I built with it just to show you what's possible with PyScript. I built a data science web app, a 2D retro game and a website to chat with ChatGPT. So let's get started. So before we take a look at the PyScript.com platform, let's take a look at the project itself. And the project lives under PyScript.net. So don't get confused here. And I already created a video about this last year. So you can check this out as well. But now let's go over the features again very quickly. So the project itself is powered by two other projects that are called Pyodide and WebAssembly. And this allows to run Python directly in your browser. So you only need to include a link in your HTML file and then you can run Python code. And it supports many popular Python packages, especially the scientific stack such as NumPy, Pandas and Scikit-Learn. And of course, it also allows bi-directional communication with Python and JavaScript. And yeah, it's a very flexible framework. And in the end, it's just HTML powered with Python. And in my opinion, this is a pretty awesome project. So let's take a look at the new PyScript.com platform and then code some example websites. So first, of course, you have to create an account and you can do this for free. I already did this so I can sign in. So after signing in, you see your dashboard with all the projects you have. And one thing I want to mention is that right now you have the opportunity to become a founder. So you can support the project and then receive exclusive swag and some more cool benefits. But of course, this is optional. So here you can manage your projects, you can create a new one, you can edit them, and you can also already view the site. So each project will be deployed. And then you can have a look at the website and share the link with your friends or colleagues. So this is super cool for collaboration. So let's create a new project and see how this works. So this initialized a new project with three files. We have a main.py file, an index.html and an empty PyScript TOML file. And as you can see here, we get an editor in our browser where we can write our code. And on the right side, we have a preview of our website. So for example, if we change the text in here, then this will be auto saved. But in order to refresh the page, we have to click on run. So here you can see the updated output. And now let's go over the code. So the most important one is the index.html file. And PyScript works by including this script here. So this is the latest PyScript.js file. And then they also have a PyScript CSS file for some styling. And the rest of this is normal HTML code. So for example, here, let's add a h1 tag, for example, and then let's give this a heading. So let's say this is a demo tutorial. And then again, this is auto saved, but I have to click on run again. And then here you see the updated page. So this is already a live website that we can visit. For example, here we can open this in a new tab. And here you can grab the full link that you can share with others. And then everyone who visits the site can also click on view code here in the bottom right to see how the code works. So let's continue with the code here. So PyScript adds three major new tags that you can now use in HTML. The first one is pyconfig. And here you can include a PyScript TOML file. Here you can, for example, define some settings and also the packages you want to include. We will do this in a moment. And the second tag is the PyScript tag. And here you can directly write the Python code in here, but it's also cool to separate this away. So here we can simply include the main.py file. And then here we can write whatever Python code we want. And one thing to note is that here we print and by default, this will create a new console window with some output. So that's why we see this black window here. And 
And then the last tag that is added is that you can easily add a pi REPL by saying pi REPL and then the closing tag. And now if we refresh this, then we see we already have a REPL that we can use. And now here we can write code on the website. So we can say, for example, A equals five. And then if we say A and then hit shift enter, then this will be evaluated. And so here we have an interactive window on our site with this Pi REPL. So now let me show you some of the features you can do with PyScript. So first, let me show you how you can write the Pi REPL also to an output. So here, let's create a new diff, for example. And here we give the diff an ID. So we say ID and then we can call this, for example, REPL output and then here in our pi REPL we can specify the output and say the output has the same name so this is also the REPL output and now if we run the site again and then again define some code we say hello equals hello world and then hello and then shift enter then you see this is now be written to this diff with the REPL output ID. The next thing, so I already mentioned this, is that whenever we print something, then by default, this is written to a console window that we see here. And here we can write any Python code we want. For example, we can import other modules. So let's say import date time as DT. Then let's also create a function define show time. And here, for example, let's print the date time dot date today. And now if we also call this function, so here we say show time and then let's run this again. Then you see we also get the current time now in the output. The next thing I want to show you is how instead of writing it to the console window, we want to write it to an HTML element. So let's create a new one. For example, this time let's use a P tag. And then we have to give it an ID. I call this today. And then in our Python code, we can say element. And this is already included from PyScript. So we don't have to import this here. And then we use the same ID today. And then we can call dot write. And then here we want to write date time date today. And here we have to be careful because this will now be the pure date time object but we also want to have the string representation. So let's convert this to a string. And now let's run this again. And now you see we have a P tag where we show the output we computed in Python. The next thing I want to show you is how we can handle click events. So this time I already prepared the code. So let me simply copy and paste this here. So here we create a button and then here we use the pi click attribute and here we use a function name and call this function. Then here we also have a P tag with an ID where we want to write the output output in. And then here I included another PyScript um, tag. So you can have multiple ones in one. And this time I'm not referencing a file. So this time I write it directly in here just to show you that this is also possible. So here again, we import date time and have a function. And now this is the same name current time. And then here again, we get the element with the current time. And then we say element and then write this and now again we have this pi click so if we run this again then whenever we click on this button this will execute the function so you can see the time is updated and it shows the latest time in this p tag the next thing i want to show you is how we can call an api with the requests module so for this let's create another pi script tag and here we import requests. And then in order to make it work with PyScript, we have to patch it. So we have to import pyodide HTTP and then call pyodide HTTP dot patch all. And now we can work uh, with requests like we normally do. So for example, we can say requests dot get and then send a get request to this endpoint. And in this example, we print response.json. And now we have to list those two dependencies. And we can do this with PyScript.toml. 
And here we say packages equals, and now as a list here, we give it all the required packages. So in this case, we want requests, and then we want pyodite-http. And now when we click run, this will be automatically installed for us. And now we should see the output in our window. And as you can see here, we get the JSON response. So the requests module is working. Now let me show you how we can pass objects from PyScript to JavaScript and vice versa. So first let's pass some objects from JavaScript to Python. So let's write some JavaScript code by including a script. So a normal script, not a PyScript. And here we can write JavaScript code. So we can also define a variable, for example, name equals Patrick. And then we can also define a function by saying function add to numbers. And this gets to input variables x and y. And here we simply return x plus y. And now we want to call those two variables, so the variable and the function in Python. So for this, we can say import js. So this is provided from PyScript. And now, for example, we can say print js.name. So we can access all the variables. And we can also say print js.add to numbers and now call all the functions with um, some variables we computed in Python. For example, here, let's hard code this with three and four. And now if we run this again, and then you see we have some more outputs. So we printed the name and we printed the sum of three and four. So this is working. And now let me show you how to do it the other way around. So let's say we have a variable in Python. So we call this a underscore Python equals and this is a number with the value 10. And now in order to use this in JavaScript, for example, we can say plus and then we call PyScript dot interpreter dot global. So it has access to all global variables. And then we get the variable with this name a underscore Python. And now remember right now the result is seven. And if we also add 10, then let's see if we correctly get 17. And now you can see we get 17. So this is working. And this is how we can access Python objects in JavaScript. So this one here is the simplest way by simply accessing the global variables. There are a few more ways how you can do this. But for this, I recommend to simply check out the documentation. So these are all the main features I wanted to show you in PyScript. And now as a last thing, let me quickly show you three more example websites that I built. So the first one is the ML demo that uses scikit-learn and matplotlib. So this one applies a k nearest neighbor classifier to classify and then plot the iris data set. So here, for example, I can select the number of k and then it will run the classifier, show the accuracy and then also show the plot. So for example, if we change k, then you should see how the plot changes and also the accuracy. So let's quickly go over how this works. So in the index HTML, we have a few input labels. And then here again, we use the pi click. And every time we click on one of those numbers, it will run this function classify and plot. And then here we have some p tags where I have an ID and there I will write the output. And then we include the main.py and here we write our normal Python code. So this is all done with sklearn. And then we use matplotlib and also seaborn to plot this. And one important thing to mention here is that in the end, instead of saying plt.show, here we say display. And then we display the figure and then we reference a target and we listed the graph area in our index HTML with this ID. And then it will write the plot to this element. And then, of course, we also have to define the packages, matplotlib, scikit-learn, and seaborn. And yeah, this is how simply you can bring a fully featured machine learning application to a website with PyScript. The second cool website I want to show you is this cool 2D game you can easily build. So let me turn off the sound. 
And then you can control this bird here with your keyboard, but it's not working in this preview. So for this, you have to open this in a new tab. And I didn't implement this myself. This is from one of the um, PyScript maintainers. So the way it works is that you again include your PyScript, Python script, and then here in this demo 10 file, it is based on the Pyxel library. So this is a 2D game engine. And then here you simply code your app and then in the end run app.py. And yeah, it only takes a few lines of code to have a fully functional 2D game in your browser made with Python. And the last example I want to show you is how we can build a website to chat with OpenAI's ChatGPT. So here we have this message box and then here we have the output where it asks what type of chatbot would you like to create and then I can for example say a friendly bot and then click on send and then here we get the text and then it says say hello to your new assistant so I can say hi and now it's calling the open AI API and we get a response so it says hello how can I assist you and then I want to say for example I want to talk about PyScript and then again it's calling the API and we can talk with our bot and the way it works is that for this we again have to do a small work around because it's not working with the official open AI Python SDK at the moment so again we have to do this work around that I mentioned earlier. So we have to import requests and then call pyodide http.patch all. And then we have to send the requests ourselves. So here we define the endpoint that we find in the API documentation. And then we send a post request to this endpoint. And here we define, for example, the model and then send over our messages. And then in the index HTMLs, we simply define a small UI with this chat box and then the button and then in the end we call our pi script main.py and yeah this is how we can set up open ai's chat gpt with pi script all right so i hope you now have a good overview of the pi script.com platform and how to build websites with python and pi script so i hope you enjoyed this tutorial let me know in the comments if you like pi script and if you want to try it yourself and then i hope to see you in the next video bye